There is something that's maybe a little bit creepy in the idea of being in a room full of skulls, but I think that also can be a little bit exciting. I don't think they're creepy. There's so many bizarre things that you never think of. You see the outside of the animal, but you don't see the scaffolding that's under the skin. It's like a piece of art. It's a piece of sculpture in nature and lots of intricate details and the bone is beautiful. We're very excited with this new version of Skulls. The idea was to update the 2003 exhibit in a 2014 format. We have over 650 specimens and um, each one, well not all of them came from Ray Bandar's collection, but many of them did. Ray has been an integral part of our department since the 1950s, and he has done amazing work. He has over 6,000 skulls in his home. He remembers many of the stories of collecting each individual skull. Everything has data, which makes it important for science. We have the largest collection of California sea lion skulls of any museum in the world, over 2,500 California sea lions, and a lot of that is due to Ray Bandar's collecting over the years. All of those sea lion skulls were collected as salvage. We collect skulls and data from any dead marine mammal that washes up on the coast in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm working with moving all of the specimens, cataloging, inventorying, packing, cleaning, conservation, working with the preparators to get them into the gallery. Often I say people give me a grocery list of what they need and I have to go find it. I have been just surprised by how heavy some things are and how light things that are comparable size are. Like the camel and a bull moose are really not that heavy. <laughs> I don't know the science behind it, but they're pretty darn light. And the rhino also wasn't as heavy as I would have imagined. But then the whales are extremely heavy. <laughs> and the walrus was really heavy. <laughs> some skulls, they really do look like the animal and some look nothing like what you'd expect. The owl monkey is one of my favorite skulls. It's tiny and it's all eye sockets. It's related to Homo sapiens, uh, us, and it looks like a really strange cousin or something. If I had to pick a favorite skull, it might be the walrus. It's got such this elegant yet atypical shape and these long tusks. And then when you learn that the tusks also are used for hoisting themselves up onto ice, that's a really exciting little eye-opening moment. I think the people who come in who love dogs will be really interested in seeing all the different dog skulls. My favorite mammal would be the babarusa, just because it has these crazy teeth that come out. From the birds, I think the spoonbill is really neat because you can see that long bill and the ramphatheca and you can sort of imagine how it works underwater. The coyote is just gorgeous. It's a petite specimen, but it's almost like it's a grayish purple color and then the teeth are bright white. We started planning the exhibit in fall of 2013, so we're working pretty quickly on this project. The biggest challenge from my perspective on the project is probably time. But the team here is so great. Um, even when it's full court press, they're so dedicated and so talented that um, even when everyone's working late hours, it's still a lot of fun and a great effort. I just hope that visitors get wowed by all of the specimens and see all of the diversity and are really inspired by the, the shapes and forms of all these skulls.